This episode is brought to you by Catherine Miller and Micah Jenkins, this week's newest contributors. Last week, I challenged you guys to drop a comment with which boat you have, what year it is, and who you were able to insure it through, and you guys came through in droves. Now, we did this because there are rumors that it's sort of impossible to insure certain boats, and instead of internet rumors, it would be awesome to have some real-life examples so that all of us in the sailing community know what's actually up with insurance. And we're going to cover that today and we're going to look at some sailboats that you can buy right now if what you want is the most substantial blue water cruiser that you can get. This week on Everything You Need to Know, the best blue water sailboat for under 250 grand. comment section in last week's episode is crazy and I want to thank everyone who participated. There are so many examples but I had to sum it up so I took sort of the middle 50 comments and I put them in this spreadsheet. This is sorted from the oldest boat to the newest boat from those 50 that I grabbed and we've got a huge variety of different boats here. From an Allied Sea Breeze all the way from 1965, we got a bunch of Bristols, we've got some C and Cs, we got a couple of Columbias, which are near and dear to my heart, Morgans, Hunters, and even a few O'Days. The first and most obvious thing that we see here is that people seem to be able to find insurance for just about anything, but there are a few caveats that we need to talk about. Obviously, the most common insurance company we see here looks to be GEICO, but of course it's Boat US. They're just underwritten by GEICO. I just put GEICO for ease of use. The other leader seems to be progressive, but there are some smaller numbers too, like Farmers, Nationwide, and the one that I use, State Farm. The first caveat that I learned here was that GEICO, or Boat US, um, is the only one that seems to be a little bit more difficult on older boats. They do seem to be open to insuring them, but they're the most pushy about the age. So maybe that's food for thought. If you have an older boat and you're looking for insurance, just call Progressive or one of the other ones. The second thing, and I think this went without saying, but we should say it anyway, you need a survey to get insurance in most cases. Without a survey, most insurance companies aren't even going to talk to you, but you can get the cheaper and less invasive insurance survey um, rather than a full-on buyer survey. So what's the verdict on insurance? As most of us suspected, I think, it does seem that you can insure just about anything, provided it's passed an insurance survey, usually within the last two years. If you're interested in more information on this, check out the comments on last week's video. Some people were saying how much they're paying, what state they're in, all kinds of good information there. What makes a proper blue water sailboat is sort of a relative thing. If you ever want to go have some fun, go on a cruiser's forum somewhere and ask about what is a blue water boat and what isn't. The arguments will ensue. Some people will say they want a big catamaran or a triamaran if they're going to cross the ocean. And that makes sense because those things are really, really fast. If you can spend half as much time or a third as much time at sea, it's inherently safer. And if there's bad weather, you can more briskly run away from or go around that weather. Whereas on the other hand, some people want the heaviest boat that their money can buy. But there are a few things that everybody seems to agree on for blue water boats. They need to be very, very well constructed. They need to have good tankage, particularly fresh water. And they need to be able to handle the weather that ultimately you will run into if you're out there doing ocean passages. Now, usually handle the weather means probably a full keel for the weight and the sea kindly motion that a full keel gives you. The full keel will also give you a lot of weight down low, so the capsize ratio is much better, and its self-writing will be top tier if you do get knocked down. It also means the brand of the boat becomes very, very important because some brands just did better glasswork and better rigging and more robust hardware. 
usually blue water also kind of means it's a bit older because back in the day fiberglass is something we didn't really understand all that well and to make sure things were strong manufacturers would just overdo it on the fiberglass layup and over resin everything so boats turned out to be absolute tanks like this first boat this is a cal 246 cal yachts has been around since the 60s they've made over 18,000 boats so they know a thing or two about solid construction they also know a thing or two about good sailing they made the cal 40 and that thing is still out there winning races this 46 gives you a very stout heavy 30,000 pounds of weight so she'll be both comfortable and safe and because she's a full keel she only needs five feet of water to keep you floating this is the kind of ideal thing for a proper proper blue water cruiser to have because you won't have to worry so much about where you're going to find safe harbor if there's a storm you can get in just about anywhere as long as there's five feet of water you'll also notice that this is a proper deck saloon with a hard dodger and a hard bimini so you won't have to be out there in the elements while you're crossing an ocean and while this boat is from 1976 overbuilt is an understatement when you look at these pictures the arch on the back is ridiculously beefy as is the rig and all the stainless work she's also got wide decks and very little in the way of clutter so if you do have to go up front on deck you're not going to be tripping over everything She's also already been outfitted too. You get a life raft, you get some solar panels, you get an in-boom furling main. We don't see that very often. And you get a lot of extra gear included, an array of spare parts. The interior pictures of this particular ad are kind of terrible, so I'm going to find a, a different model to show you of the same boat. These boats will all have sort of different interiors. It was all custom, but this layout is kind of my favorite. This is so bright and airy and it makes for a very nice place to be. You also get two private cabins with private heads at both ends of the boat that are very large and easy to live with. And just after the saloon is an actual galley galley and you get a big engine room in the middle. These cows have been known since they came out in the 70s as one of the best and most roomy blue water cruisers that money can buy. And they sail fairly well too, despite all the weight and accommodations that they're carrying around. You can actually find them all over the world. This one happens to be in La Paz, but I've seen them on both coasts and in Europe. And while this is a great example of a classic cruiser that will get the job done, there is some more modern stuff that we should probably look at. Lady K Sailing is brought to you by patrons, people who give a couple of bucks an episode to make these videos possible. A big shout out to all the existing patrons that have gotten us this far. I couldn't do it without you guys. If you find some value in these videos or you want to help out the channel, please consider becoming a patron. Next up is what's probably best described as a modern classic, and these will be the classics in 20 or 30 years. If you're into the more traditional design, but you want modern amenities, you've probably heard of these guys. This is a 2001 Gossard 44. Ted Gossard was a British yacht designer and builder, and he spent a number of years in the Royal Air Force as an airframe mechanic, so he kind of knows what he's doing. After the RAF, he came to Canada and he did construction for a while, but then he lived in the Caribbean for a spell and he fell in love with monohulls. And he built himself a 45-foot triamaran called Manta. Talk about ambition. After that, he came back to Canada and he started a little company called Bayfield, which would eventually lead him to founding Gossard Yachts. Now, Bayfield and Gossard are most recognized for being big, fat, heavy boats that are sort of made for big weather. They always tend to have bow sprits and big, robust sail plans. And this Gossard is no exception. You get that signature bow sprit that supports a furling head sail right in front of the self-tacking furling stay sail. And if all that furling isn't enough for you, you also get an in-mast furling. You can literally pull two lines and have this boat sailing. Three lines and you'll be freight training along under full canvas. These 28,000 pound boats are just beautiful to behold and they're sort of rare enough. I mean, this is a gossard that every time you moor it up somewhere, people are going to flock over to ask questions about it. It's that beautiful. This boat also sports a full enclosure at the back to keep you happy and safe even when the weather does turn. And during that ocean, ocean passage, 
you're not going to need to spend precious amp hours running the autopilot because right from the factory, Gossard fits their boats with a self-steering mechanism on the transom. And speaking of amp hours, they've already started tackling that problem because the owners have added solar panels and a wind generator. And you also get davits out back to haul the rib around, which you should get for 250 grand. If you know Gossard, you know they're famous for not using exactly a standard layout on the inside. I like to call this the single couple layout. Instead of a V-berth, you get a full-on living room up front. It's couches and chairs. It's amazing. This boat has everything you'd want for everyone to hang out on at the end of a passage to sort of sit around that massive table and maybe play cards while enjoying some much-deserved sundowners. That living room up front gets its own head too. And then in the middle, you get a nice dinette and a nav area and an amazing galley. At the back, the master stateroom is actually sort of in the back port side and is relatively tight for this size and price of boat. But it does support its own head as well. If you don't like the aft cabin as the owner's cabin, the front around those couches does drop into a very large bed and that room can be sealed off. What really sells at Gossard though is the sheer beauty and build quality. All the woodwork and joinery is a work of art and everything is so rock solid. This is the kind of boat that doesn't creak and groan as it weathers the ocean waves. These boats are so robust and stately that the commanding $250,000 price tag starts to make a lot of sense when you start looking for comfortable boats that will actually cross an ocean with the safety and comfort that you're going to demand if you're going to do such a thing. Of course, where would we be on a list of proper blue water boats without Island Packet making some kind of an appearance? And while they're known to demand top dollar prices, 250 grand can get you what I call the newer generation Island Packet. Now, we all know and love the timeless Island Packets like the 35 or the 38, but the newer generation are the boats that tend to have a zero in the name. And that zero usually means on the bigger boats, they finally give you a way to get on and off your big yellow boat without scaling the sides of the boat. This is an Island Packet 420, and this is one of my favorite boats in the world right now. It may still be yellow and basically the same shape as every IP ever made, but this is the modern version of their boats. Let's check it out. Outside we get the Island Packet Cutter Rig with the rollers for the head sail, the stay sail that's self-tacking, and a roller for the main, which is awesome, and we should expect that at a quarter of a million dollars. We also get an arch at the back with solar, and radar on it that gives us a nice spot to drag the dinghy around. And we get that stout island packet rig and lots and lots and lots of beefy high-end hardware to make the boat work when you're out at sea. It's gonna break less when you have better stuff. But being a more modern boat, we finally, from island packet, get a sugar scoop, or sort of a small sugar scoop. But it means we can actually get on, on and off this boat in a semi-dignified manner, which is a new feature for this time-honored Blue Water brand. I've been on the 420 twice, uh, and both of them, trust me when I say, the pictures that you're seeing do not do this boat justice. It is so big and roomy on the inside, and the build quality of the interior is outstanding. It's second to none. And although this one, and IP people, IP people correct me if I'm wrong here, the wood seems to be darker than normal. I mean, I like it, but it doesn't look like the regular Island Packet wood color that I'm used to. We get a big IP style saloon and the galley is huge and it's actually very well laid out and easy to live in, even in bad conditions. Of course, we also get basically a two bedroom, two bath apartment here. We get a big comfy stateroom up front that you can close off from the rest of the boat and we get the same thing at the back. And being an island packet, it goes without saying that you'll be getting a full keel and a protected prop and a rudder that's protected too, like you would expect from these boats. It's so robust. The only downside to island packet, of course, is some chain plate issues, but with a good survey and good care over time, you should be able to negate those problems. These boats are just so classic and modern and robust, and they're known the world over to have one of the best, if not the best, owner's group that I've ever had the pleasure of interacting with. Nothing has ever gone wrong with an island packet that the owner's group can't help you fix. The Island Packet boats are so battle-tested that the company even offers to, for a fairly substantial price, take your old Island Packet, 
back to the factory for you and refit it with all new modern amenities. They're going to update it, repair it, refresh it, and modernize it. You can take a mid-90s boat and it'll come out almost brand new. So you can sail it for another 30 years. Amazing company, amazing boats. Boat shopping is fun and I routinely get asked, yes, those boats are lovely, Tim, but what would you buy for that money with your money, your hard-earned dollars? What would you actually invest that kind of money into if you had to? And that question is one I actually usually try to avoid because everyone has different tastes and different standards and different things that they want. And the boat world is already fraught with opinions and you guys know I do my best to Try to stay completely neutral. I'm not a gatekeeper by any means. I won't tell you to buy something that isn't what you want. I want to be opening the doors to sailing to get more people in. So I tend to tear the walls down, not build them up. But my hard-earned dollars, 250 grand, I hate to say it, but I'm not a full keel fanboy. I'm just not. I won't shy away from bolt-on keels as well. And I know from experience that my time aboard is actually spent living on the boat most of the time so i need space and comfort but i also need to be able to race it when the opportunity presents itself which of course is anytime there's two sailboats going the same direction on the same body of water that's a race this my friends is one of the top contenders this is a catalina 470 a 47 footer from 2005 and on the outside it may be basically every modern catalina ever but wait till you see the inside. This boat gives us, of course, the sugar scoop and walkthrough, but also a twin helm, which is kind of rare for Catalina, and a massive, I can have 12 friends in the cockpit that seems to go on for days. I get full length jib tracks on the side to work the head sail in performance mode. I get inboard shrouds so I can point higher. I get a clean deck so I can run the kite if I need to with people running around on the deck without tripping over everything. But I also get creature comforts like a furling mainsail that makes my life easier, albeit at the cost of sail shape. The cockpit is just ridiculous. And if I'm gonna live on a boat, which I will, this is my backyard and where I drive from. Um, so it has to have this much room, but still be so optimized to get the sailing done. One minute you can be having a dinner party, and the next you can be pinching around a race mark, grinding the winch on the low side, getting sprayed in the face with salt water. This, it's perfect back here. Inside though is where the ridiculousness goes up a notch. The interior is insane. I've lived in houses less amazing than this boat is. We get the big galley on the port side with a proper workstation to starboard. And if you've ever spent eight hours editing YouTube videos, you know that this is important. Everything in this boat is a nice light wood color, so it doesn't feel like a cave, and it comes out beautiful. It's so light and airy and huge feeling. If 95% of cruising life is actually spent living aboard, this is where I want to live. In this saloon, you get a massive wraparound sort of couch thing with two very sexy looking captain's chairs to starboard. I can honestly see hanging out in here on movie nights or the ever so common rum tasting with 10 of your friends from buddy boats. There's room in here to run around. Up front we get that Pullman style forward berth which a lot of people tend to like and it gives you a huge massive head up in the bow and in that head we get a separate shower and in that separate shower we get a laundry machine. I seriously can't get over the size of this saloon. It's so bright and happy looking and the space is incredible. Heading back aft, however, is this boat's party piece, the massive owner stateroom that makes it hard to imagine that there's a whole cockpit above this room. The stateroom feels like a much, much more expensive yacht, something you'd see at a boat show. You can walk into the room, close the door, and feel like you're in a hotel room. There's a little makeup desk, and there's a TV, and there's room to actually move around and get dressed. And there's storage everywhere. And of course, you get your aft head, which is, again, huge. Now, don't get me wrong. I know this isn't a blue water boat by most definitions, but the sailing that I do, it's just blue water enough. Can it cross the ocean? Yeah, probably. Is there a better boat for that? Absolutely. But to run up and down the Caribbean for retirement, this boat hits the nail on the head. It's tough enough for everything that I need it to do, but it's insanely comfortable. Between this and an Oceanus 45, man, that would be a hard choice. 
I get asked a lot for help from people that are boat shopping. So I dedicated a page over at LadyKSailing.com where you can go and book an hour of my time if you need me. It's LadyKSailing.com forward slash consults. And if you want to chat with a bunch of like-minded sailors, we've got a great community going over on the Lady K Discord. I'll leave a link. Until next week, guys, keep the heavy side down, but not too far down. We'll see ya. Mm -hmm.